so much, Sarona. Thank you, uh, the Campaign Against Arms Trade, and thank you, uh, fellow artists, Jacob, Toby, and Amina, for sharing your work and your stories. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been involved um, with political creative activism for almost four decades, and I'm speaking to you today from like the heart of the beast, the belly of the beast in Washington, D.C., um, I work these days, um, I am an artist, I do uh, build giant puppets and props and visuals for all kinds of actions, I teach people how to walk on stilts and invest in mass spectacle and theater and to actually provide, if you will, soundtracks and visualizations for some of the resistance movements here in the United States and then I also work globally with a group called Beautiful Trouble. But I mean, for me, it's all about building people power uh, to make positive change, to challenge and transform these unjust, violent, extractive systems. And that's what I think of when I think about reflecting the times. We are in this place where we as artists have a potential to vision a better future, provide people hope in that vision and put some words, some uh, language, some images to that vision that can inspire people and, and move people and support people in getting invested in that work and building their own capacity to make art. And I think that at this point in my artistic work, um, I'm extremely on the far end of community practice rather than, and I think this is a challenge for us artists where, and I think Amina reflected it uh, when she mentioned some of this where we sit inside our small studios sometimes and just create art for ourselves and work through our own issues that hopefully do reflect in the bigger world. Um, however, if what we want to do is make change, there is a whole strategic framework around these things that we need to invest in with the help of frontline communities, those communities who are invested day to day. And those communities actually need the help from artists so that art or what I usually call cultural work because it's not for me just painting and drawing and singing and dancing. It's how we do our work, how I do my trainings, how we invest in action on the ground, how we model the world that we do want. Um, so it's more of a cultural work framework so that the art and the beauty, the beauty of it is not just icing on the cake. It's not extra. It is in and of itself the work that we do, the art of facilitation, the art of community building, the art of creating things together. And I think all these things are really big challenges for us. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I work uh, with a group called Beautiful Trouble. We're a collection of activists, artists, organizers, educators globally dedicated to making revolution irresistible, which is from Tony K. Bambara, a really wonderful author and um, director. And it's about innovation and being more effective and bringing our full selves to this work. I mean, there's nothing quite as powerful as incorporating our culture, our uh, existence on so many levels as the other artists have talked about into the work that we're doing and to stand up to this corporate homogenization that actually says that we don't matter as individuals, that we all have to be the same. Um, and this is a great way to mobilize people um, in, in a fun and wonderful way to take action together, um, building our communities power so that we can really make change. Um, and uh, I think um, for me, I'll just talk really quickly about some of the uh, artistic endeavors I'm involved with with community right now. Everything from working here in Washington, D.C. with groups called Spaces in Action and Shutdown D.C. to take on our government. In the, and I'm sure those of you following what happened in the United States over the last four years know we had very actively had to resist the coup. Um, that was attempted here, and we have to continue to hold our government accountable. We built a human-sized children's game recently and deployed it on the mall in front of the Capitol here. Uh, people might remember, I don't know if people played this game when children called Candyland, but we built a 20, uh, like 10, uh, I guess must have been about an 8 meter by 8 meter plat actual game played with life-size boards to talk about women's needs, women's rights, and children's needs, and supporting those who are on the front line and communities of color, the social support and healthcare needed. And I'll say just as a, a, a way to say more about how I got involved, I became an activist when uh, fighting nuclear weapons. And very quickly in the work against nuclear weapons, 
I recognized that we were investing so much in death and destruction while here on the earth now were so many people living who needed things right now in social services and education and healthcare and food. And so there was this great, um, a great connection and awakening in a lot of us who did work on anti-nuclear weapons uh, and transition to economic and racial justice because they're all connected. And it reminds me very clearly of another uh, um, artist, poet, Audre Lorde, who said, you know, we don't have single issue campaigns or single issue uh, fights or struggles because we don't lead single issue lives. And all of these things, whether you're working on uh, women's rights, you know, patriarchal institutions, capitalist systems, uh, environmental degradation, all of these extractive industries and all these extractive systemic practices are connected and are reflected in the work that we do as artists and the work that we do building power together. So um, one thing I'll say also about some of the work that I do with uh, Beautiful Trouble, and I really encourage people to look at that free resource online because it talks about not just the tactics that we use because we, but the bigger picture of how we decide what will be effective at making change and building our power. So Beautiful Trouble starts with all the stories, all of the wonderful resistance work that we've done, some success, some failures, and then teases out of those stories, the principles, the theories, the tactics that then can be used in your own context. Um, we call it a pattern language, for those of you who are thinking about how to access things so that think you can make it accessible in different ways, in different formats, that's an art, like I consider that an artistic or creative way to think about information and use this information. And um, we really uh, support everything from the creative activism that's happening right now in the streets of Myanmar to defending democracy uh, campaigns that are all over the world. And um, we take our creativity in our artwork, even to developing a card deck of strategic creative activism that can be used by people. Actually, there's one right here on my deck, on my desk. Um, and uh, we really encourage people to, to engage in this cultural work as um, we encourage people to think of the joy of resistance or resistance as joy and art as an integral way, art and culture as an integral way of claiming our power and working uh, out things together. So I really thank you all for being here and thank you to our interpreters as well. <laughs>